Hey YouTube, it's IC, and welcome to the 146th episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. All right, and to start off, similar to last week's episode, this video is going to be slightly shorter than normal. Now, first up in the news, exactly two weeks after holding their annual Worldwide Developers Conference and issuing the first iOS 7 beta firmware, Apple officially ceded iOS 7 beta 2 to developers. And actually, following Apple's release of iOS 7 Beta 2, I created a new video that highlighted a security flaw in Apple's iTunes update system that will allow any user to install iOS 7 Beta without having their device registered on a developer's account or without having their UDID registered. So this is a pretty big flaw, and for those of you who are curious and you want to see it demonstrated, just be sure to check down below, I'll have a link to it. And also, someone asked me if they had upgraded to iOS 7 Beta 1 via this method, and they wanted to test it to get to iOS 7 Beta 2, the best way to do it would be to just obtain the iOS 7 Beta 2 IPSW and then follow the exact same method highlighted in that video to preserve your data and all of your content on your device. Now, hypothetically speaking, while an over-the-air update may work properly, it's best to just follow that method as it will ensure that your device will continue to function properly. And also, in addition to that video, I made another one that highlighted iOS 7 Beta 2, some of the changes and it also went over pretty much all of the features of iOS 7 on the iPad. So if you guys want to see that and you want to see iOS 7 Beta 2 demoed on the iPad, just be sure to check out that video. For those of you who don't know, Apple didn't include iPad support in the first beta version of iOS 7. Beta 2 is, of course, the first test version of iOS 7 for the iPad. And yes, it does include the iPad 2, the third generation iPad, the fourth generation iPad, and the iPad mini. And along the same lines, following the release of iOS 7, in beta 2 earlier this week, BGR published a new report that suggests Apple plans to cede the third beta version of iOS 7 to the company's carrier partners on Monday, July 8th. Now, while this news may seem insignificant to those outside of Apple's contracted iPhone carriers, BGR believes that, like with iOS 7 Beta 2, it's likely that the next beta will also be released to developers on the same day that the update is pushed out to carriers. And of course, looking back, like I mentioned earlier, it took Apple exactly two weeks to issue the second beta of iOS 7 after seeding the initial beta following this year's Worldwide Developers Conference. And a July 8th release for iOS iOS 7 Beta 3 will fall exactly two weeks after the release of the second beta. So needless to say, there's definitely a pattern forming here. The company followed a similar two-week interval release schedule for the first two versions of iOS 6, but quickly shifted to three-week intervals for the third and fourth beta versions. However, considering iOS 7 is the most drastic visual shift in iOS since the mobile operating system made its first debut alongside the original iPhone in 2007, Apple may be moving to a more frequent seating schedule to keep developers updated on the latest improvements and bug corrections in iOS 7. Now with that said, of course just be sure to stay tuned for complete coverage on upcoming versions of iOS 7 and the final public version, which is scheduled to be released this fall. Moving on, also earlier this week, as I'm sure some of you are aware, I did pick up my Google Glass unit, which I'm actually holding right now, and I did create an unboxing video for Google Glass, so if you guys want to check that out, just be sure to look down below in the more info. I go over over Google Glass and exactly what comes with the Explorer Edition, which is what I've received. And for those of you who don't know, I'm going to answer a couple of quick questions right now. So about 8,000 individuals were selected through the If I Had Glass campaign to receive Google Glass early. Now the final product is set to be released sometime later this year at an unknown price. Currently, right now, those who pick up the Explorer Edition will have to pay $1,500. However, Google has confirmed that the release version will be significantly cheaper. The the reason why the Explorer Edition is priced so high is to attract only those who are adamant about the product and will provide reliable feedback to Google. And I've got to say that, so far I really like Google Glass, however unfortunately it just seems to have limited functionality and it doesn't always seem to be practical. But with that said, there's definitely some room for improvement and they will certainly expand upon Glass's features in the future and that's what I'm hoping for before they release the product to the public. Now finally, I just wanted to reference a new article on 
Jailbreak Evasion, formerly Evasion Jailbreak, and the name and structure of the site has recently changed, so just be sure to check it out. All right, now as many of you know, with the release of iOS 6.1.3, Apple effectively patched a number of vulnerabilities that Evasion relied on to provide an untethered jailbreak for iOS 6, which did include 6.0, 6.0.1, 6.0.2, 6.1, 6.1.1, .1, and 6.1.2. With that said, a commonly asked question is whether or not Evasion will be updated to include support for iOS 7 in the future. Now to answer that question, it may be helpful to look back to the past. During the time of the Chronic Dev team, the group first released a utility dubbed Green Poison, followed by two major iterations of their iOS 5 jailbreak tool referred to as Absinthe. Furthermore, over the years, the iPhone dev team has continued to make significant compatibility updates to their world-renowned Red Snow utility. And considering that POSIX Ninja, in addition to the evaders, is also planning on developing a future jailbreak solution, it's likely that we'll see something new. However, as far as the evaders are concerned, there is a strong possibility that the team will update Data evasion to include support for iOS 7. Needless to say though, of course I will keep you guys completely updated on the status of any future jailbreak utilities here on my YouTube channel as well as just in this series and on best tech info, so just be sure to stay tuned. Alright, and that concludes this video. Don't forget it's not too late to enter into my $100 and $50 Amazon gift cards giveaway. Just be sure to rate this video up and hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release new videos and to gain an entry. Just be sure to leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. Once your comment's posted, you'll be automatically entered to win. And if you don't know what to leave in the comment section, try answering the question of the day. Would you guys use Google Glass? And if so, what do you think you would use it for most? And if you don't really see yourself using Google Glass, what features would Google have to add to Glass to make you want to use it? So really, just leave anything related to Glass in the comment section of this video or on Best Tech Info. And just to be updated more often, be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and add me one of your circles inside of Google+. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.